Welcome back, everyone, to today's video. We're going to be doing your first Emacs configuration. So I did a little minimalist Emacs configuration here just as a, a demonstration of a few things. Uh, one, because as I'm sure some of you may know, if you're new to Emacs, it can be a little overwhelming and you probably see a lot of fancy configurations and functionality in videos that you may see on YouTube or elsewhere, kind of showing off some of the fancier features of Emacs and the extended functionality. But then when you first open it yourself, it may look a little plain and kind of vanilla. Well, because there's two different approaches you can take to Emacs here, which is starting with vanilla and slowly customizing it to your needs as you go on, or you can adopt one of the um, pre-built configurations like Space Max here or Doom Emacs is another popular one that build in a lot of the most popular Emacs packages and give you a lot of nice extended functionality right away. And of course, there are some users who will say that uh, packages like Doom are maybe a little too complicated or a little too developed and they prefer to start in the vanilla world and just kind of customize it their own. If you are more in the vanilla world and you want to customize it yourself, I uh, I put together a very minimalist configuration here. Uh, I called it Dark Star just because I thought that sounded kind of cool. And uh, I might put a few more features on here, but for now it is pretty simple. It's uh, basically just a org mode file here with some code snippets in it that we're going to tangle and we'll show you how to do all of this and of course i'll have a link in the youtube description to this github page where i've got this loaded and then all you'll have to do of course is uh, you can download the whole archive itself as a zip file or you can just download this uh, single org file right here config.org i've already done that you see i've got it on the desktop here so we'll jump right in and i'll show you how this works so when you open up an org mode file for the first time here and you see these code snippets you can understand a little of what's happening here there's a feature of org mode called org babble and um, if you look that up on youtube you may see some of my videos or, or some of the other ones out there that explain more about what this is it's basically a way of doing what they call uh, literate programming where you have a a written document that has code inside of it uh, for a full program or maybe multiple different uh, languages all in one. This is all Emacs Lisp because we are um, just doing an Emacs configuration. But basically what this does is it's going to take these code snippets here and it's going to tangle them into this file in the home directory, the uh, .emacs file. This is one of the files that Emacs will check whenever it starts up uh, in order to load some of your configurations. So of course, we're gonna skip right to the exciting part here. We're gonna go ahead and tangle that. So all you need to do to tangle this is Control V, Control, pardon, Control C, Control V. You can see down here in the echo area. And then you hit the T key. So Control C, Control V, and then the letter T. And it says here it tangled five code blocks from config.org. And we know it tangled them into our .emacs file. And of course, if you had different code snippets in here for different languages or different files you can actually set this um, these properties here on individual code snippets so they can actually tangle code to different places so this is a very powerful functionality in org mode we're just using it for the emacs list for now so we'll go ahead and close emacs right now and uh, as i said before so that tangled all of that code into the dot emacs file so now as it's opening emacs you see it's reaching out to the package managers, which are declared in the file itself, and it's doing some downloads of some packages. This is all normal stuff. You'll see it's just giving you some uh, information about what it did here. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that. And uh, just to be safe, I'm going to close Emacs one more time and then open it up. And you'll see here it just opened up into Emacs. So this is still a little bit plain because I didn't put a lot of extra fancy stuff in there as far as configuring a theme or anything like that. Um, a lot of the main functionality that I put in there was just to, as much as possible, and still keeping it minimalist, improve the user interface a little bit. So starting at the top, what we have here were the package declarations that I told you about. So this is going to load up these various Emacs package archives where you can download 
additional functionality, different Emacs packages. One of the first installations it does up here is it installs the use package package. And what that does, I'll make this a little bigger, is it's a package that allows you to set these little declarations here uh, that indicate other packages that you want to install. So if you install use package, uh, you can put these into your configuration file so that if you ever run this again on another workstation, it'll automatically reach out and grab those packages that you'd like to install. And um, if you have this in your configuration, it won't do anything. It'll just um, grab some of these values here. This one here, for example, just turns on uh, this mode right here, which is Vertico. And you'll see what that is in a moment. That's going to give us some, some nice uh, auto completion options for functions and files and things like that. Also orderless. This is a package that um, also has some nice functionality. I'll actually open up the config file because I kind of explain a little more about what some of this does. Uh, that was on the desktop. Yeah, why not read from this? I'm actually going to turn on visual line mode so these line wraps will come in a little bit. So as I was mentioning, uh, with Vertico and Orderless installed, along with Consult, I would say right here, in terms of improving the user interface of Emacs right away, these three packages are indispensable. So what they'll do is, uh, so for example, let's say you were looking for a, a certain function. You can do meta x, and you'll see here, um, I can just start searching for one. So if I wanted to turn on auto fill mode, for example, I can just start typing auto space fill, and then it will complete auto fill mode, and I could turn it on. But let's say I forget the name auto fill mode and I know I'm looking for a function that has something to do with fill. I can start typing it in here and I can just type fill mode and it'll show me some clever auto completions here. So this is the, the orderless package. It doesn't matter in what order I start typing, it will bring in these completions for me. So you see there, that's the one I'm looking for, auto fill mode. That's the, uh, the mode function that I wanted and I didn't have to type it in perfectly, it just matched it for me. So that's a big improvement right away, and it'll do that for file names as well if you are in a big directory with a lot of files. It makes it incredibly more convenient. And then the consult package here. Um, so what this does is it, uh, as I wrote here, gives you fancy asynchronous search capabilities. Uh, so there's a few things here. So one, uh, you can get the consult buffer, which I mapped to meta s and letter B. So you can see, I don't have much going on right here, but a few buffers, but if you had some bookmarks or projects that you were working on, uh, this will not only list them out in the mini buffer here, but it'll also uh, let you just jump into them right there. Um, consult grep is like a, a fancy version of grep that will allow you to search through files. If you're in a, a project directory, that's, you know, you're looking for a specific file. That's incredibly convenient. Uh, meta S and the J key I mapped to consult outline. This is one of my favorite, uh, favorite new functions that I've discovered. So if you are in an org mode buffer like this, and you see we have a, a bunch of different headings in this file. So if this file was longer and we had uh, more headings, it was more complicated, and we even had some subheadings, I could do meta S and the J key. And you see down here in the mini buffer, it will show me all of the headings in the file, and I can just jump down. So if I want to come down to this uh, window dressing section here, I can just click it, and it would jump me right down to it. And uh, in the window dressing here, I just have a few things that... Uh, improve the 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 interface a little bit. I um, turned off the startup message, um, turned off the uh, the function to make backup files, put a little palm tree emoji up here in the um, uh, what do they call this area? the the frame title. Yes, yeah, so in the frame title up here. you have a little palm tree emoji in the file name. And uh, I turned off the menu bar and the toolbar and the scroll bar. And uh, I have a function here, toggle frame maximized, that just starts Emacs in this mode, this full screen mode. And then some org mode stuff down here. These are all things that I may cover in other videos. I wanted to set this base configuration for another reason where um, I'm doing some future videos. I can start from this base configuration and we can customize it more as we go along. Um, so this is just a, a good starting point here. So we may come back to this in other videos, uh, but that's it. Yeah, that I feel is a good starter configuration for Emacs and org mode. 
that improves your user interface and um, also is something good you can build upon as we will customize it in uh, other videos. All right, well, there you go. That is your first configuration for an Emacs beginner. What do you think? If you have any comments or questions, of course, as always, you can drop them below. And uh, I will go ahead and leave the video right there. Thank you for watching. I will see you all next time.